Hi, welcome to Decision Point. My name is Jerry Escalante. I'm part of the staff and personnel here at KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And in behalf of Grace Randall, our general manager, all our staff, and me personally, we want to welcome you to this program. Today we have a very interesting guest, something that is uh, perhaps not a part of our lo daily lives because we are not in a situation whereby we would need it. But I want to introduce you a professor from UTEP who is actually a, a doctor who has through... Uh, his ears in engineering and he will explain a little bit more about what he has uh, studied, what he teaches at the university. A particular object that can be used throughout the world where it is very difficult to obtain this object. And what we're talking about is we're talking about a prosthetic leg that can be used on a person who has of course has his, his leg or her leg amputated and is now using a prosthetic. Uh, without further ado, let me introduce to you Dr. Roger Gonzalez. Dr. Gonzalez, would you say hi to our guests on, on camera mm -hmm. too, please? Hi, thank you uh, for having me. Appreciate being here with uh, on this day. It's, you know, uh, uh, doctor, I was, I was looking to the literature that you have provided for us and, and, and I was seeing all the wonderful things that you all are doing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I found it very interesting that a prosthetic has an average cost of between $3,000 and $30,000, which is something that, that uh, many people who would not be able to obtain one of these uh, mm -hmm. uh, objects, one, one of these uh, prosthetics, would not be able to get it because of the a tremendous expense that is involved in this. However, you and part of your students have developed a product that can be used. Can you please explain to us what it is that you have uh, developed, what you have come up with? Right. About 10 years ago, I was a professor at a, a small Christian organization uh, called Eternal University and decided at that point that we wanted to be able to give back of our skill sets and what we did. And so we developed what we tried to term the lowest cost polycentric knee in the world. And a polycentric knee is what you see right here. Uh, it's this device right here that you see in which this knee helps you to bend uh, right. your leg like you normally would if you are amputated. So what we decided to do is to make this as inexpensive as possible mm -hmm. for people, for the poorest of the poor around the world. And so some students and I designed that about 10 years ago and we've been refining it to the point where we now have made this available in, in Asia, Africa, and uh, Central and South America for patients to be able to walk again. And, and that's really was the aim of what we started doing 10 years ago and now in the process of that, I moved to UTEP uh, two years ago to be able to, to continue my academic career as a professor mm -hmm. and bring the research that we're doing on this and help getting students involved in the mm -hmm. process. So as a native El Pasoan, it's great to be back in El Paso and to be able to, to share this with uh, you know, students here in El Paso, but also to be able to continue to help people around the world, especially as we're looking at trying to help people in Mexico. In Mexico. Are you doing anything in Mexico at the time? We have n not currently. We've been working a lot in Africa and Asia, mm -hmm. but in the next year, in 2014, mm -hmm. we're going to uh, start an initiative both in Juarez and Chihuahua and other parts of Mexico to really make this available to the poorest amputees in the country of mm -hmm. Mexico so they can be able to regain mobility. Mm -hmm. I, I want to uh, point out that this is something that, of course, for someone who has had her uh, leg amputated would be s such a, a, a tremendous need of uh, a first need because the ability to be able to walk with, even with a prosthetic leg mm -hmm. would be tremendous. But uh, I want to make it clear that uh, right now because of regulations we are not able to avail this in the United States. That's correct. The United States has a lot of regulations that are concerned around medical equipment. Sure. And this is considered a medical device. And so we will have a, a version of this available in the United States, mm -hmm. but because of the regulations, it obviously can't meet the cost constraints that we've set for it. Right. And so part of the issue is that eventually when someone comes to us from the U.S. and says, I'm interested in your technology, we're trying to work at a way to be able to make that available. Right. It'll be a little bit more expensive, but still be very affordable. The price that you mentioned, you know, right. between three thousand and thirty thousand dollars per per fitting, involves a lot of factors in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Part of it is very expensive components. 
because these components are actually made by for-profit private companies sure. that take a lot of engineering, take a lot of research. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't make hundreds of thousands of these. You make, you know, thousands of these in which patients are fit in. They have to recoup those profits. It also involves costs regarding fitting, rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So these costs are tad up. So most patients really have a hard time be able to afford something like that, especially if they're on a fixed income. So that's why we developed this to be for the poorest of the poor around the world. When we provide something like this for the poorest of the poor, they are probably looking at something that they never thought that they would be able to afford. That's correct. But nevertheless, you are able to provide these for an average price of about $300. That is correct. For $300, this is a person who's been amputated above the knee. For $300, they get the actual knee joint, they get a pylon, and they get a foot. This is an example of Bangladesh. This is a little bit different, but we provide everything that you need. All you need to do is actually take this componentry, or the, mm -hmm. what we call the hardware, to a prosthetist, and then they will fit you. Okay. And there's some additional costs for that, but to make a whole system available for $300 is actually quite an incredible feat. Mm -hmm. Well, it would be incredible because you're talking about the hardware, which is actually the part that works. The rest would just be aesthetics, wouldn't it? Correct. So what you see here is, if, if you're, this is what we call a cosmesis. Okay. okay. It's just, it's just a fake covering, so it looks like a thigh. But realistically, mm -hmm. this doesn't play any functional role. Mm -hmm. All the functional role lies inside this whole system. So if somebody were were to wear one of these prosthetics and they, and they for some reason couldn't afford uh, uh, this portion, they, they wouldn't really even need it, would they? That's correct. If they're okay walking around with the hardware showing. Right, that's why we call it cosmesis or cosmetic. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you have pants on, if you have shoes on, really no one sees right. beyond the, the pants or the shoe to really understand that that's essentially just cosmetic covering. So that's actually part of what helps us keep our costs low, is we have to make decisions about what's really important. And mm -hmm. we've really focused in a lot on, let's focus to put our resources and our money into helping somebody walk functionally again. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at patients that do more than just go from the kitchen to their bedroom three or four times a day. We're looking at patients that want to walk several miles or kilometers a day. Mm -hmm. Some Somebody still says, you know, I have my livelihood, I'm still strong, how can I still regain that mobility? And, and one of the things we've seen around the world is that, and especially in the poorest parts of the world, walking is so essential to what sure. we do. You know, in the United States, we're used to cars, mm -hmm. and so walking is essential. And we even have, for example, in in parts of the world, a carpenter who is wearing our leg. And you think about, well, what's a carpenter doing? He's working with his hands. But if you allow him to walk again, he doesn't need a crutch. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he's just able to use both his hands right. in doing his work. So it's, it's amazing how much mobility plays in the role into helping you be able to be self-sufficient again. Right, because what happens, like in the case of the carpenter, his hands are freed up mm -hmm. for him to be able to accomplish a task that he's looking to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you a question. I know, I know this is kind of putting you in the spot a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, how long have you actually uh, and practically been uh, offering this leg internationally? Well, we started offering just our knee joint, okay? okay? And then the clinics would put the rest of it on it. We've been doing that for, gosh, nine or, or more okay. years. Okay. Um, we have started offering our entire system. So many clinics came back to us and said, well, we really like your, your knee joint, but we really want to have the rest of the leg. And so we worked, uh, we've been working hard at putting together the rest of the pieces together so we could offer one complete package, mm -hmm. which we call the mobility box. We put everything in a box to give you mobility. And in that box has everything you need other than your socket that you can actually take to a clinic and say, I want to be fitted with this. Okay. And uh, so we've been offering that. We've just, that's a new campaign for us. And we start offering that or probably within the last six months. Within the last six months. It's interesting, I was speaking with a gentleman that, that comes and does volunteer work for us here at the station answering phones. Uh, he's actually a pastor's son, and, and recently he had a prosthetic foot installed. Mm -hmm. a and uh, one of the things that he was telling me was that the hardest part of a prosthetic would be the knee. Correct. That that it, the fact that his knee is operable it puts him way ahead of, of many people who, who who are not 
you know, uh, who do not have a knee, but the knee that you developed is a knee that would be so difficult to obtain mm -hmm. were it not for the case that you invented this uh, so that they could afford it. Because isn't that probably one of the major costs of a prosthetic in, as far as the leg is concerned, the knee joint? That's correct, especially if you're amputated, uh, you know, along the thigh, which is up here. Right. The knee joint plays such a critical role in walking, right? And so part of the issue is that this component right here, just by itself, can run you thousands of dollars. Right. And even the most simple knee joint that you can buy is still close to $1,000, $600 if you get a really, really inexpensive one. So what we did is we actually took this idea, we studied all the knee joints that were available out there and decided how can we make this knee joint as inexpensive as possible and still have functionality. And so we, we knew that what caused knee joints to be expensive was bearings, the materials that they're made of were sure. titanium, they're very expensive. And so what we did is said, how can we make it? So we made it out of a, a plastic called Delrun and we took all the bushings and the bearings out so that you can actually make this locally in the clinic and repair it locally. One of the advantages of this is that because we really took all the cost out, we were able to make it so that it's repairable in the field. Because what you see all the time is these come, you see people give their knee joints of a loved one that's passed away to a country like in Sierra Leone, Africa, where I have been. And what happens with these knee joints is that they need repair. Mm -hmm. And in, if you're in the poorest country of the world, there is no spare parts. Right. So these knees stop functioning. So our design is made so that you can actually repair it in the field. Even, even though we have nice hardware, you can put an 8 millimeter bolt that you can get at a hardware store mm -hmm. and still create a functional knee. Mm -hmm. So part of the issue is not just the initial cost, but the maintenance of, of knees is very expensive if you make it out of expensive parts. So that's one of the things we really worked on is to keep it continually affordable for the patient, not just initially, but as they continue to maintain it themselves. And the maintenance, the maintenance is, would be so much easier that they themselves would be able to do it or, or, or a friend or someone who would not specifically work on these every day. In other words, what you're saying is that with a regular tool, Mm -hmm. With regular everyday tool and, and, and with a, a bolt and, and the hardware that you can purchase at a hardware store, mm -hmm. you'd be able to repair a knee at the location. That's correct. All you need is some simple hardware like an 8 millimeter bolt and a nut and a, a screwdriver or a Phillips head and a wrench and you'd be ready to go. And so that to us became very important in the design process for us. Because we, were, we would see around the world, I would see patients that had a nice knee that was donated but it wasn't functioning six months or a year later because it had broken and they had they, they had wire wrapped around it or they mm -hmm. had welded pieces of it together when mm -hmm. it, it really was unfunctional at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing? Uh, we're speaking with Dr. Roger Gonzalez from LIMS International and, and uh, this is an organization that has come up with a, a prosthetic leg that, that is able to be used throughout the world. In fact, right now they're uh, uh, operating in Africa, they're operating in Asia, Central America, South America, through uh, different parts of the world and uh, in, in the very, very near future looking to operate in, in uh, Mexico. Mexico, of course, uh, being our neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, how great would it be that we would be able to provide us a city? Because actually, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Mm -hmm. Gonzalez, the hub, the, the organization is based in El Paso. That's correct. We have our international headquarters, downtown El Paso, and we have our research labs in an agreement with UTEP where we do a lot of our research and other components that we're developing. Mm -hmm. We're developing upper extremity uh, components. We're developing uh, really more sophisticated feet. Uh, and we do all that research based out of UTEP. And that's been a great relationship between uh, my background as a biomedical engineering professor and LIMS International that we can be based on campus and students uh, undergraduate and graduate students mm -hmm. have a big participation with us in what we're doing. Dr. Gonzalez, let me, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, again, putting you in a difficult situation, you of course have been doing this for, for about 10 years, uh, mm -hmm. uh, nine years that the, the knee was actually put out uh, in the market just to, for lack mm -hmm. of a better term. 
But in your experience, have you seen people that have started using this prosthetic and have been able to see them mm -hmm. uh, a year or two or three later? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of testimony would you offer as far as uh, how this has worked? You know, there's two patients, uh, Peter, right, uh, and, and Joseph in Kenya that we started working with 10 years ago. Okay. The very first time we looked at any, we put it on him. And Peter is one of the patients that you can go to our website at limbs.org and his story is profiled. He got attacked by a hippo in Kenya. He was out uh, swimming, uh, washing his clothes in a lake, Navasha, which is outside of Nairobi, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And hippos uh, were swimming in the lake. Now, hippos are really interesting because they look like very calm animals, but they're actually pretty violent animals, especially if they get upset. So a hippo attacked Peter. And in that, Peter, the hippo bit his leg across the knee and then flung Peter around and just kind of threw him on the beach. The hippo went off and Peter was going to die there. But a few people, good, some good Samaritans, picked Peter up, mm -hmm. took him to the hospital, and they had to amputate his leg. Peter came to us and we fit him with our leg. And today, Peter has worn our leg for almost 10 years. And Peter is one of our best patients because Peter, you know what Peter does for a living? He takes census for the Kenyan government. So he's all over the place. So he's walking around everywhere. Mm. And he, he, he really puts our, our leg to test our knee. And every time we try something, I give it to Peter because I know he'll test the, heck, of, the mm -hmm. heck out of it. So Peter today was single then. Today he is married and has kids. To me, that's a best testimony. Of course. Because if you're a young lady, you're going to marry somebody that can provide for your family. Of course. Mm -hmm. And you would not do that unless you felt that that patient, that that mm -hmm. husband of yours could provide for you. So Peter today is out working. He has a job. The other patient carries windows. Uh, they manufacture windows and he carries windows from the manufacturing facility and loads them on trucks. He could not do that if he didn't have a leg. So Part of the issue is we're seeing people's lives changed, mm -hmm. not just because they walk again, but because it gives them a sense of hope. Right. You know, you can imagine if you and I lost our leg, what would what could we not do? Let me just give you a, a really clear example. You and I take showers. Yes. Every day. What would happen if we only had one leg? How would you move around the shower? That's unimaginable to right. me, really. We would have to hop, right? Mm -hmm. And what happens if you hop? You could slip and fall. Right. So part of the issue is creating a sense of independence where you have mobility to be able to do the things you once lost. So it's not just about losing your ability to walk. It's about really losing the sense of, you know, independence that you need to regain this mobility. So one of the things that we're doing is working with organizations around the world churches, community groups, to be able to say, partner with us so we can help amputees not just walk again, but regain the sense that they lost when they lost their limb. Well, th that is really, truly amazing. I have a, a personal question sure. uh, uh, in regards to uh, what you have elected, what you have uh, taken on as, mm -hmm. a, as a calling, really. Mm -hmm. You are a uh, mechanical engineer. Correct. You could be designing bridges, you could, mm -hmm. and you probably do. You could be designing buildings, designing trains, mm -hmm. designing so many different things. What led you to actually follow this specific uh, organization, this specific need that needed to be filled? You know, I grew up here in El Paso, and uh, and in growing up, my parents used to go to Juarez about once a week to do mm -hmm. some shopping. Yeah. And I remember being in junior high and, and going over once a week with dad. And it was really obvious back then that the poor, even in Juarez, compared to the poor in El Paso, lived very different lives because of social structure we have in the United States. And I one day saw a, a young kid about my age, you remember, I was in about junior mm -hmm. high, and he's begging on the street. And he is an amputee, he doesn't have legs. And, uh, and it really affected me because I thought, here's someone my age, a young child, instead of running around playing soccer, they're there begging on the corner. And it really grabbed my heart. And I, I realized, why can't this person walk again? 
And that stayed with me for years and years and mm -hmm. years. And as I went through my education, as I eventually got my PhD, I realized that I had the ability to give back to that kid mm -hmm. somehow again. Right. And so I realized, you know, I have students, they're energetic, I have research labs, why can't I use those for the sense of doing good? Mm -hmm. And so we started down that journey 10 years ago. And so what motivates me is to say, I've been blessed mm -hmm. as a Christian, as someone who has seen the very best of life. In many ways, I believe I have been given much. And it's part of me saying, to whom much is given, much is expected. Amen. And, and give back to those who are the poorest of the poor who have been amputated for whatever reason to say, let me give you a chance to walk again. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's probably the most satisfying thing about being a professor, being a scientist, uh, uh, being a Christian who is able to give back to what I do. Right, and, and, and living in the border, mm -hmm. you have uh, an opportunity that perhaps others would not have, you know, that, that you live living so close to a, a third world country, we, we might say, which of course is Mexico, and, and then you see the, the need. And uh, what really amazes me is the fact that, that when you did this project mm -hmm. with you and your students, what really, uh, that, that you always had in mind to make it available, to make it affordable, to make right. something that, that, uh, that they would be able to obtain. Because of course, with an average price of thirty to uh, twenty two thousand to thirty thousand dollars, you know, here in the United States, well, with the aid, with government mm -hmm. aid, and with different mm -hmm. organizations that help out people with who need a prosthetic leg, they, they have the the help. But in Mexico and in these other third world countries that they don't, you had the foresight of mm -hmm. uh, designing and, and 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 developing something that they would be able to mm -hmm. afford. We mentioned that each one of these has an average cost of about three hundred dollars, not including the, all the cosmetics about it. But mm -hmm. but with three hundred dollars, and after they put their cup, after they put their, uh, what did you call it? We that call for? this a socket. A socket. Once that socket has been, because uh, these are custom. Correct. These are custom. custom made. Sockets have to be custom made. Right? right. Because they have to fit the the the, the stump. Right, uh, of the patient. Of the patient, they have right. to fit the stump, so they would have to be a specific diameter, they would have to be a specific length, so they would have to be custom made. So, and after they do this, uh, for $300, they're able to have the actual hardware that makes it operate mm -hmm. and make it and make it work. How many, if you can even give me a mm -hmm. ballpark figure, if you mm -hmm. can think of something, how many have been already uh, uh, provided for people throughout the world? Well, this knee, where we came up with, uh, I'm pretty confident we're easily over a thousand. Is that right? One of the things that's really hard for us is, for many years, we have taught in Senegal, which is in Africa. We taught in Haiti, uh, down the Caribbean, taught in, in uh, Bolivia. So we taught them how to make this knee locally. Cool. So in many ways, they're continuing to make it, and I don't know how many they're making. Okay. So, so in many ways, I don't know fully how many are out there. But I hear people come to me, for example, I had a friend come to me and says, I saw your knee in Afghanistan. We have, I've never been in Afghanistan. And so seeing someone mm -hmm. tell me that they saw our knee in Afghanistan was like, that's really great. They saw it in Kabul. I've seen people come to me and, and tell me from different parts of the world. When I go to international conferences and says, yes, I'm familiar with your technology and we've seen it in these countries. So part of it has been neat to see that uh, that this technology has been able to impact a lot of people that I've never even seen. Right, right. So that's been pretty fun. So, and it has been uh, rewarding for you. I would, I would imagine developing something that 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 I really believe that this is a calling, mm -hmm. a true calling of the mm -hmm. Lord placed in your life from a very, very early, very young mm -hmm. age, and are now actually seeing it come to fruition, and and hearing of people mm -hmm. throughout the world using it. Uh, family, uh, this is what it's all about. We get a calling from God. We, we, it comes into our heart and we respond to it. We see a need and we fill it. And, and uh, the Word of God tells us in the 15th chapter of the book of John, 
that we are the branches and he is a trunk. And the way that the Father is glorified is when the branches bear fruit. And in this case, we have a situation where people who would otherwise not be able to walk, otherwise not be able to, to, to do their tasks, work, even, even be employed and do the different things. Imagine uh, Peter, a, a census taker, which means that he's all over the region in the, in, in the, in the furthest confines of his village of the world, uh, uh, taking a census mm -hmm. of who's who, where's where, and, and where everything is. And he's able to do it through the use of this. In the future, we will be talking more. I'm going to continue inviting Dr. Roger Gonzalez so that he can be with us and see how we can help. Uh, right now, you can go to the website. It's www.limbs.org. www.limbs.org. And you'll be able to read the testimonies. You'll be able to read all the wonderful things that are taking place. And, and uh, in the very near future, we will be providing these in Mexico. We'll be providing them in Chihuahua, at Juarez, Ciudad Juarez, which were, was where originally the seed was fermented, mm -hmm. and, and, and then later it became the fruit that we, he is now, mm -hmm. and we are now able to harvest. Mm -hmm. Dr. Gonzalez, thank you so much for being with us. It's thank truly an honor here. to know you, truly an honor to be able to be a part of this in, in our own little way to let the uh, community know of what El Paso mm -hmm. is doing and, and, and that you really make our city proud. Thank you. And, and once again, you know, if you want to say a goodbye, uh, mm -hmm. have a, a minute or okay. so. Thank you for having me and uh, thank you for time together. Uh, we are really here to try to make a difference. And, and in a sense, all of us at Limbs International, from the staff to the board of directors, are really committed to making a difference in people's lives. Uh, we live by very Judeo-Christian principles in which we believe that we have been given much and we're working hard to use our gifts to meet the needs of those of the poorest around the world. Thanks for having us. Amen. Amen. Truly our pleasure, truly the pleasure of KSCE to have such a fine organization represented here uh, in, in this program of Decision Point and, and, and so proud as a city, so proud as a community that we are able to provide these legs throughout the world, even though it is the idea and, and, and born of one man, it is the effort of many mm -hmm. who have actually made it happen, who have actually brought it to fruition. Once again, thank you for being with us here in Decision Point. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you. And uh, always keep him in your prayers. Let us do that so we can be with him. Thank you.